All right, guys, I'm going to try to make this quick, so like a 10-minute video or something. Unless you've been living under a rock for the last few months, you've missed the fireworks of what's been the United States uh, campaign for president. Um, let's go back first. Let me start with this. Let's, let's first talk about a guy who was a lifelong liberal Democrat and went on to become what the Republicans may say the savior of the party. Uh, in 1962, a guy by the name of Ronald Reagan uh, leaves his liberal democratic values and becomes a Republican. In 67 to 75, becomes a mayor in California and then goes on twice to lose a nomination as a Republican for president. But then finally in 1981, gets elected as president, serves two terms, um, has a gross domestic product of nearly a, a growth of almost 7 or 8% per year, takes on labor unions, takes on foreign policy, domestic issues has a tremendous success reducing taxes, um, building our military and our strength and our stature in the world, and goes on to have, uh, I think, an approval rating when he finally left office of 68% among the highest in modern history of uh, any president recorded. A liberal Democrat that become a Republican. Let's go forward then and talk about uh, another guy who, who people said didn't have a chance to, to do anything, and that was Jesse Ventura. Um, at the time, I think in 1991, as a member of the Reform Party, and goes on to uh, uh, from 91 to 95 to serve as uh, the 38th governor of Minnesota, uh, makes uh, sweeping uh, property tax changes there, gives the state's first sales tax rebate, uh, serves one term because he says that's his, uh, he's done his uh, civil duty to his community and to his state, and he, he doesn't want to be a career politician. Ads in, in that campaign, by the way, uh, for which he was a huge underdog and didn't spend a lot of money, uh, his message to voters was, do not do not vote for politics as usual. Well, fast forward to 2015, we have a guy that enters the race that's not a politician by the name of Donald Trump. You might have heard of him. Donald Trump's created a lot of stir and a lot of emotion, and a lot of debate within the presidential campaign for uh, 2016. And he's done it because of straight talk, uh, because he talks about what needs to be talked about, the things that middle America, red-blooded Americans, the middle class, that's the unsung majority that doesn't get hurt from, like you and I, instead of the ultra-elite rich uh, campaign donors who normally uh, control this process, or on the other hand, the ultra-poor who are sucked into the Democrats because the Democrats make them believe that they're somehow more important to them than they are to Republicans, and that's just simply not true. Uh, where the Democrats want to give you $10 and send you to uh, collect more food stamps. The Republicans want to give you 20 and give you a job. And that's really the big difference when it comes to those things. And whether or not those people in those categories take advantage of those things, well, then that's a whole other story. But that's what leads us to the process. In the last several years, our voting numbers, the amount of people that turn out to vote has been extremely low. And why is that? Because people are sick and tired of the process. Now we're excited. You have a guy, Donald Trump, that comes into the process that says what needs to be said. He says the things that hasn't been said, talks about immigration, talks about jobs, talks about in straight talk, not this political polished uh, speech that tells you what you want to hear and then gets to office and does an entirely different thing. Let's first talk about his immigration program. Um, he's been the first one to talk about immigration and it's been like a hush-hush thing, like we should not talk about immigration in America. But let me tell you something, it's a serious problem. And let's, I don't wanna, I don't wanna make this sound like it's just a Mexican problem because illegal aliens come to America from all over the world and that needs to stop. We do need a southern border because it is obviously connected to the United States and that's where a bigger part of the problem comes from. So we need that secure border. We need a wall all the way across. You know, China built a wall that's 13,000 miles long. We can surely build one that's 2,000 in order to secure our borders. We have illegal aliens that are coming here and taking over America silently, kind of the same way Russia did at Crimea. They sneak across the border. They're taking our jobs. They're living off of free health care, food stamps. They're doing all the things except for paying taxes and being an American. They want to keep the citizenship of the country that they come from, but they don't want to participate and become a legalized American citizen. I've got a problem with that. Then this week he was criticized for talking about anchor babies, and this is a this is a true issue, and I, this is something I've said all along. I, I don't think that anybody that comes here illegally should have the right to have a baby and it be an American citizen. How is that legal? Well, we talk about the 14th Amendment, but first, speaking of the Constitution, the Amendment, we're a land of laws before we're a land of anything, and minus that, we're nothing. So... You come to America illegally, you've already broken the law, yet now we're going to give you the opportunity to have a baby and have it become a legal American citizen and live off the, all the rights and freedoms that American citizens enjoy. Remember all the people that lived and breathed and fought and died for that red, white, and blue flag 
in order for us to have those freedoms. We're now going to allow people to come here illegally, breaking the law and take advantage of those things. So I agree at the term anchor babies because I think that's what people do and it needs to stop. But let's be clear about something. We wouldn't even be talking about the 14th Amendment to the Constitution and naturalized citizenship by birth if our borders were secure. Not just from Mexico, from Canada also. You know, in the debate a few weeks ago, uh, Donald Trump was skewered. And not because of whether or not we wanted to find out he's going to be a good president, but because he stood up against the establishment. You remember that ultra elite rich that I talked about earlier, the liberal media, the Democrat Republican process that has their polished individuals that they think should be president of the United States. That's not the way this country was was founded. It was founded by framers who said, I want to make a difference. And they come here and they fought and uh, they want our independence. And they did it because they were sick and tired of the government holding them down. So that comes to now where we are in this process. Donald Trump says, I'm sick and tired of how the government works. and I'm tired of them holding us down. We're losing jobs to the rest of the world. We're losing jobs to illegal aliens. America is not great like it used to be, and he wants to make America great again. And that's the part about Donald Trump that I love. Well, people say, okay, well, he's filed bankruptcy. How can he make America great again? Well, let me tell you something. He's had thousands of business deals that were obviously very successful. And you want to talk about bankruptcy? America would be bankrupt right now if it weren't for the fact that we continuously print money and raise the debt ceiling. And who do we blame for that? It's politicians. They're the ones spending our money recklessly. So I think that you, know, you got a guy that's a billionaire that employs more than 22,000 people, and then they say, oh, wait a second, though, some of his stuff is done overseas. Look, we have to have a global economy, but we need to win as America. We can't make tra trade deals all over the world and continue to lose. And people say, well, the 22,000 people work for him. He can't talk about illegal immigrants because he's got 1,100 visas. Well, if you take 22,000 people and he has 1,100 legal visas, that's less than one half of 1% of his entire workforce. I think he's done his fair share to make sure his employees are American. He said, talk about foreign policy. We have an administration right now that's done more damage to the United States around the world than they have in the last 50 years. Iran, the most recent deal we have going on with them, they hold our hostages. We're making side deals with them that's going to allow them to self-inspect their own nuclear facilities. Oh, because they're going to tell the truth. Because Iran has never lied about anything in their history. How do you make a deal with a country that wants to wipe Israel off the face of the, of the map and destroy America? It's impossible. Those people will never be a God-fearing, loving nation who wants to have peace instead of war. Yet we make deals with countries like this. You have ISIS. You have Hezbollah. All these things that we're not dealing with. ISIS is running around beheading Christians, raping women and children while the strongest country in the world stands back and watches it, even while some of our own people are persecuted. That's got to stop. Domestic policy. Race relations in this country are probably worse now than they've been in the last 40 years because you have a president. I hate to even use the term president. You have a leader, a president of this country, who gets on board with the Black Lives Matter thing, and it's a race discrimination issue in America. Let me tell you something. Black lives, white lives, green lives, furry lives. Cecil the lion in Africa. You saw the outpour of support that he had after he was viciously murdered. All lives matter. Get on board with that, Mr. President. And remember, it's not just a black or white issue. People are killed every single day. And then you go on and say, well, what about gay marriage? Three years ago, Mr. President, you opposed gay marriage, but as soon as the Supreme Court passed it, you put the rainbow in the White House. You don't even put red, white, and blue lights on the White House for our independence, for America's birthday, for the 4th of July. I'm tired of political correctness. I'm ready for leadership that stands up and says what needs to be said. And as you continue to attack a guy that you say doesn't have a chance, and he continues to rise in the polls, it's because he's awakened a sleeping giant. Middle America, you and me, we're tired of seeing our country being taken over by people that don't belong here. Come here legally. Be a part of America. Don't come here illegally and break our laws and then think that we owe you something. We don't. Donald Trump is going to do his part to make America great again. And he's going to do it with the middle class Americans who have been silent until now. He, you've awakened a sleeping giant. It's time to make America great again. I'm excited about that. I'm excited for Donald Trump, and I want him to continue doing what he's doing in order to make America great again. Until next time, God bless you all.